Things labors to ensure that future accountants coming out of the institute would be able to face and overcome the challenges and new expectations from the accountants world over. Devising strategy for creating more jobs for our members, particularly in government sector, and create business opportunities for the professional firms. Refining further CPD programs to keep the members abreast of developments in the profession and for the purpose partnering with the institutes of repute for holding workshops for the members. Establishing a separate wing of research and development, reports of the R&D wing would be disseminated among the members and at international forums to include ICAP's contribution in the world of accountancy. This year, we also need to focus on establishing close coordination with SECP, FBR, and State Bank of Pakistan for adding value to the business economy, safeguarding public interest, and for the development of our profession. As I close my speech, I would like to thank the entire Golden Jubilee Committee, especially the Chairman, Mr. H.M. Yusuf, who have put their heart and souls in creating such wonderful memories of the entire year. The grueling sessions and the hard work of the entire team is throughout appreci thoroughly appreciated. I also acknowledge the contributions of the ICAF staff as the events of the year could not have been possible without their efforts and dedication. Please give them a big hand. I am sure you will extend your wholehearted support and cooperation to ICAP family in the years to come and as we march ahead in a new dawn with, re with, with renewed vigor and hope. Enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rashid Saab. Um, you've heard Rashid Saab and you've also heard um, Hafiz Saab and they've both told you that there are going to be tremendous opportunities to learn. But trust me that other than learning, there will be lots of opportunity for networking. And we have um, arranged some activities also which will break up the monotony and maybe help you unwind. Today we have an entertainment program which has music and comedy and some poetry. Uh, tomorrow uh, we um, have also arranged something else. You are all, that is all the participants of the conference today, are requested to come along with your conference cards. Because the card swipe on the machine is necessary to enter your CPD hours and get you conference souvenirs. And you have absolutely no idea how much time we spent in developing this conference goodie bag. I hope you appreciate it. And this will be available tomorrow morning when you come for the conference. And uh, tomorrow in the conference, in the last session, there will be a lucky draw for microwave ovens which are sponsored and manufactured by Pell. You'll be happy to know that we are giving away 40, 40 microwave ovens with an approximate retail value of rupees 10,000 each. Your physical presence is compulsory to get the gift. In case if you're not present, the lucky draw will be cancelled. And this lucky draw has been arranged in the last session of the conference tomorrow. Okay, now I <laughs> can notice, <laughs> I do notice that this has generated a little bit of enthusiasm. So ladies and gentlemen, now is the time to invite our first keynote speaker. As you know, our keynote speaker has specially flown in from the UK and he is Mr. Clive Barrett, President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales, with over 30 years of experience of providing strategic, financial, and commercial advice to growing businesses. During his career, he has worked with listed and privately owned companies, venture capital firms, accountancy firms, corporate finance boutiques, private equity houses, and he is director and chairman of several leading companies of the world. Please put your hands together for Mr. Clive Barrett, ladies and gentlemen.
England and Wales to make a small presentation to your president. Not as prettily wrapped as it might be, but I do my best. Thank you. Mr. President, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, people keep thanking me for coming to Pakistan. It's an enormous pleasure to come to Pakistan. I've not been here before. I'm sorry I can't stay longer. And it's also a great honor to be present at your Golden Jubilee Conference. We see you as a daughter institute of the ICAEW, so it's great to see you come of age. <coughs> A bit more than age. I am going to talk to you, I fear, about ethical aspects of doing business in these testing times. We've called it walking the ethical tightrope. The trick is not to fall off, of course. The issues I'm going to talk about are, in my view, equally applicable, whether you're in practice or in business. Uh, my mother wouldn't have recognized the introduction to me, but that said, I have spent over 20 years I was in practice, and for the last 10 years, I have been in business. And in both areas, ethics and ethical considerations arise. In my various roles, uh, yes, it's been said I support deregulation. I support better regulation. But in terms of integrity, ethics, and the tightrope, this, I think, is something which is of importance to us all. Let's see if this works. Very good. Modern business. Or in the modern business environment, we've always been told to, we're going to expect a huge amount from our finance professionals. But the reason I put this slide up is in 1963, which is before I'm sure, I've already been told some of you weren't born at that stage. <clears throat> I fear I was. But at a lecture at the ICAEW, the deputy controller of Shell said, we expect a finance manager in an operating company where he went on to say most of the money was made, to wear three hats.